Yes, folks, it's that time of year again, the Manila International Auto Show. And for the first time ever, it's being held at two venues, here at the World Trade Center and at the SMX Convention Center. Of course, like any other MIAs, we're going to be covering some of the all-new car launches along with some highlights along the way. So without further ado, join us, Top Gear Philippines, as we cover this year's Manila International Auto Show. Baik is staging a Philippine comeback, and staging their comeback includes the introduction of five new models, consisting of crossovers and SUVs. Now we're going to start with the entry-level model, this, the X55 Verb, and it competes with the likes of the Honda HRV and Hyundai Creta and Toyota Yaris Cross and the like. So this one competes in the highly competitive subcompact crossover market. Now we're going to move on to the car one size bigger than this the X70 Verb. Now up next we have this, the X7 Grandeza. Now the Grandeza competes in the compact crossover class, one size class higher than the X55. So the primary competitors of this, at least in terms of size, is the Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, Subaru Forester, you know, the usual suspects in that segment. But this one uses a 1.5 liter turbo engine, just like most Chinese crossovers these days, and it's shared also with the X55. But for those looking for something that can go off-road, we're going to move on to the next bike product. Now, this SUV beside me is the B60 Beaumont. Now, yes, it looks massive and it's not just because I'm vertically challenged. Now, this one competes in the class of sort of the Fortuners, the Everests, the Montero Sports. But looking at it in person, it's actually quite larger than those SUVs. And bike really took to heart the market that it's competing in because unlike most Chinese SUVs, this has a diesel engine, something very important in this segment. Now, at the top of the bike range is this, the B80 wagon. And we already know what you're thinking. Save it for the comments. This being the flagship model, it retails for over 4 million pesos. And it's got a twin-turbo V6 under the hood with about 270 horsepower. When you step inside, there's acres of leather, which is what you'd expect from a luxury vehicle. So if you're looking for a budget VIP SUV of sorts, well, this might just fit the bill for you. Anyway, that's the Baik range in a nutshell. It's time to move on to the next booth. Now, if you're on the market for a slightly higher up MPV, that's sort of the subcompact category, well, you have this from Suzuki, the XL7 Hybrid. Now, it may not be a full hybrid system, but the 48 volt system in this might help you save a few liters at the pumps. Now, mechanically, it's mostly unchanged, save for the belt start generator that's attached to the engine. But that being said, it also features all of the hallmarks of the standard model. So it's still practical, still spacious, and it can save you a little bit more gas in the long run. In this year's Mia, Subaru went all out when it comes to special editions. Now for the Forester, they're introducing a variant called the Wild Edition. So basically it gets a two-tone look, it's got a matte black hood, and you know, it's got different wheels, all-terrain tires, and strangely enough, a body kit. I'm not sure how that'll pair off-road, but here we are. Now up next is this one, the WRX GT Edition. Now, Essentially, it's a unique version of the WRX, at least for Southeast Asia, and it gets a different set of body kits to go along with it. Now for the BRZ, yes, they also made a special edition for it, or rather, it is a concept for now at least. Now, it is the STI Sport. So this, of course, is available in Japan as well. So it gets a different front lip, STI wheels, which you would assume are lighter, some more SDI tidbits down here. And of course, you're not gonna miss the huge wing over at the back. But if the BRZ is a little too compromised for you, there is the Crosstech GT Edition. 
Now, again, it's a bit like the WRX GT Edition, you know, different body kit. Although the Crosstrek comes with a unique set of alloy wheels exclusive for this market only. And by this market, I mean Southeast Asia. But the highlight of the Subaru booth is a return of a certain badge, the XT. And this time around, they've attached it to the Outback. So yes, the Outback XT brings back the turbocharged crossover to the Subaru lineup. So it's got a 2.4 liter engine, over 250 horsepower, and about 350 newton meters of torque. And we say it would make a perfect dad car. Now the Japanese and the Americans might have a stronghold in the midsize pickup market, but the Chinese also want to muscle in in that territory. And JMC has this, the Grand Avenue. Now it's available in either two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive guises, manual or automatic transmission. But something that caught our attention, aside from the design, are the rear brakes. See, most pickups come with drums at the back, but not this one. Even the two-wheel drive version comes with rear disc brakes. And the interior, well, it looks rather promising. And this is something we're rather curious with, and we're actually looking forward to trying this out in the real world to see just how it fares with the establishment. Now, we're also going to cover yet another new Chinese brand here at Mias. By now, you're probably spotting a theme by now. But this time around, it is a Swedish-Chinese collaboration from Geely and Volvo. Now, that brand is none other than Link & Co. And they brought a whole barrage of cars to this year's Mias. Now, right behind me is none available in the Philippines, maybe just yet. Now, this is the O3 Plus, and it's their performance sedan. And Link & Co. is aiming very high with this sedan because it's sort of comparable to something like a BMW 3 Series or an Audi A4 or Mercedes C-Class or even the Lexus IS. So it remains to be seen if this will be sold in the Philippines, but let's go elsewhere and take a look at the cars that are actually available here by now. Now, the one with a huge crowd over there is the Lincoln Co. 01, and it is their flagship crossover. Right now, you can't really see much of it because there's a lot of people in front of it. So anyway, it is a plug-in hybrid crossover, a C-segment crossover to be exact, and the numbers are pretty promising. So you're looking at over 250 horsepower and more than 350 newton meters of torque. It's also got all-wheel drive, and the best part is it is a plug-in hybrid. So that should help you save a little bit at the pumps. Now, another model of interest is the Lincoln Co. 05. Now, what is the 05, you're probably wondering. It is a bit of a coupe crossover, so I mean, you get the same front end as the 01, but once you go to the B pillar and back, it looks pretty sleek and rakish. So for those looking for a coupe crossover, maybe that's something you could consider. But let's say you want something a little bit in the entry level market, subcompact crossover. Well, Lincoln Co. has that covered as well with the 06 model. Now, the 06 is actually a very close relative of yet another Geely product you're probably familiar with by now, the Geely Cool Ray. They share the same architecture and the same mechanical bits, particularly the engine. It even has the same 1.5 liter three cylinder turbo engine and exactly the same power and port ratings to go along with it. The difference is, well, this one has more tech and a little bit of flair when it comes to styling. It's definitely unique and a bit of a love-hate thing. But one thing you can't say about Lincoln Co. is, well, they're bland looking. Because just look at their cars. They're pretty offbeat and out there when it comes to styling. Hyundai, the purveyors of very practical and comfortable crossovers and vans, as well as race cars. Now, this here isn't just some tarted up Elantra. In fact, this is the actual TCR race car that competed in the World Touring Car Championship. And it was driven by I have no idea who that guy is, but I do know who the champion was, and that was Norbert Michelis. So why did Hyundai display this Elantra N? Well, that's because they also rolled out the road-going version here at the World Trade Center. And yes, this is the real deal, and yes, you can buy it now. How much, you ask? Well, for less than 3 million pesos, you have about 300 horsepower, or almost 300 horsepower. So, when it comes to performance bargains, well, that's a pretty solid deal. And also, it's a sedan, so it might actually pass as a family car at some point. But if you want to go even faster, we're going to have to look over there, because that is the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. Now, by the time you're watching this, well, we're kind of in the middle of doing something about the Ioniq 5N. 
but I can tell you that I have driven it already and it is the least intimidating way to have 600 horsepower. The chassis was brilliant, the acceleration was amazing and whatnot. And because it's a crossover, it's also immensely practical. So there's a lot of good stuff about the Ionic 5N going on and you can have that one for about 4.2 million pesos. That perhaps is the most affordable way to get 600 horsepower. Now, GWM seems to have a very diverse product portfolio. Now, on one hand, you have products like this, the tank, an off-roader of sorts, and then you have crossovers such as the H6 and the Jolion. Now, at the same time, they also offer a subcompact electric vehicle simply called the Aura. So it's interesting to see what GWM has done here. So instead of just focusing on one sort of vehicle, there's sort of more options to go about. So let's say you step inside one of their showrooms and see what you like. Well, you can also explore other options. So that's a very interesting strategy that Great Wall did. And all these models are on display here at the Manila International Auto Show. And here we have yet another newcomer in the form of JAC. And it's all part of the Astara conglomerate that also handles GAC and JMC. So yeah, that's a lot of J's and C's and A's along the way. But anyway, JAC specializes more on crossovers and pickup trucks. So what we have here is their flagship model, the T9. Now, of course, they have other models as well, such as the JS8, the JS6, and the JS4. Now, of course, the number corresponds to their size, but we reckon it's this one that might attract a lot of sales because, let's face it, Filipinos just love their pickup trucks. Now, this futuristic-looking crossover beside me is the Cherry EQ7. Yes, folks, this is a Cherry product. And as you can see, I'm standing beside a Charger, which means this is a pure electric vehicle. But that's not the only crossover that Cherry brought here at Mias 2024. On that side is a rather familiar looking face. Now, it may look like a Tigo 7, but you're probably gonna notice something different around the front bumper. Now, there's a reason for that because this Tigo 7 is actually a plug in hybrid model. Now, it's coming soon to the Philippines with indicative pricing ranging from 1.7 million to a little under 2 million pesos. So, this might be a game changer in its segment if that pushes through. Now, of course, it's no surprise that Mitsubishi is celebrating their Triton model here at Mias. So there are a variety of variants here on display. So from the Athlete to this, the GLS. And if you've noticed, it's actually on AT wheels or all-terrain tires. But you know, the Triton isn't the only one on display here because Mitsubishi also collaborated with Overland Kings to outfit their Montero Sport. And that's not just a 4x4 now, okay? That's actually a legit GT 4x4. So um, basically just shows you the possibilities that you can do with the Montero Sport. And the same goes for the Expander. But of course, somewhere over there is the Rally Truck. Okay, it's not the actual model just yet. It's a replica that also shows the new livery of the Triton. Now that's because Mitsubishi is joining the Asia Cross Country Rally again next year, and they are aiming to beat Toyota at their own game after they were dethroned last year. So it'll be interesting to see how the Hilux and the Triton will fight next year, given that the Triton already has a few miles under its belt. By the time you've seen this, you've seen the Chang'an CS15 right on display at the Manila International Auto Show. But before it made its public launch, we were able to get this right beforehand. And there are a couple of things that are very interesting about this car. Now, the subcompact crossover market has becoming very crowded lately, especially in the sub 1 million peso price range. So how is this thing going to stand out? Well, the CS15 aims to do that with a very lucrative price. And yes, we're going to discuss price first. It starts at 799,000 pesos. And if you buy one now, it's 50K off. So it's 749,000 pesos. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, at that price, I'm probably expecting just a couple of seats and the steering wheel and nothing much inside. But that's where Chang'an wants to differentiate itself among its competitors when you step inside. So to paraphrase that Cornetto commercial, saan na abot ang 799,000 pesos mo? Well, inside, it's actually a pretty good looking cabin, if I'm going to be honest about it. I mean, yes, it's hard plastics everywhere, but 
Come on, guys. It's less than a million pesos. It's less than 800,000 pesos. And with that, you can get a touch screen. It's got mobile phone connectivity. You get cruise control. You get steering wheel audio controls as well to go along with it. You've got power adjustable things here and even a headlight leveler. But for those considering one as a family car, you have that extra peace of mind thanks to standard stability control, among other things. And also, this is just one variant, but it already comes with leather seats and a leather steering wheel. Okay, a leather wrap, but come on guys, who can find genuine leather in this price range? For the steering wheel adjustment, well, it tilts, it doesn't telescope, but that's totally fine. That's totally a given in this price range. So all in all, looking at it, well, not bad for 799k, and you even get a sunroof. So how do you say luxury in Mandarin? Well, apparently it's Hongqi. Well, okay, that's not the literal meaning, but rather Hongqi is the longest running Chinese brand ever there. And they're also the main provider of the presidential cars as well. So over here, they just launched this, the HS3. It is a subcompact crossover with a 1.5 liter turbo engine. And of course, there are other highlights here at the Hongqi booth. They have an electric sedan along with an executive saloon of dying breed these days and of course a luxury van of course there's no shortage of electric vehicles here at Pongchi, and a popular model has been the ehs9 their flagship model the middle of the Hongqi lineup is the hs5 and so far all of them have been actually doing pretty well especially the flagship model surprisingly how big do you want your pickup well, if you're looking at Photon's range, you have this, the Tunland V9. And this is not an exaggeration. This is how big it actually is. So um, something interesting about this, it's actually a diesel hybrid. And you're probably wondering why no one's thought of that before. Well, it's actually been produced before, but you know, no one's really made it super mainstream. But in the case of the Tunland V9, well, that's what Photon is trying to do in this case. So it's going to be an interesting combination. So you have the efficiency of a diesel and the aid of electrification. So, okay, so it's a huge pickup, obviously. And we're curious to see its fuel economy because, you know, it's a heavy vehicle at the end of the day. But if it can do, let's say, 15, 16 kilometers per liter in the city, then that's a very strong result for this. Now, the V9 isn't the only truck that Photon launched today. There's also the smaller V7. Still a massive truck, but slightly smaller than this behemoth. Now, MG had quite the surprise here at the Manila International Auto Show by launching a whole load of new cars here today. So we're going to go by them one by one. We're going to start off with what's possibly going to be the mainstream model, the MG3. Now, the MG3 is a subcompact hatchback, something a bit of a dying breed these days. But it's a little different this time because it comes standard with a hybrid engine. So we're looking forward to trying that out along with this one, the MG7. Another bit of a dying breed segment, the mid-size executive sedan. But of course, we love crossovers here in this country and SUVs. So they also offer the RX-9. That's another all-new model right from MG. If you're looking for something even more practical and you're not really into SUVs, they also have a van. Finally, MG has a van called the G50. So they're all here in this side of the Manila International Auto Store in SMX. So um, other highlights here, of course, you have the Cyberster Roadster, the MG4 X Power, and a new electric crossover that's just somewhere over there. There's a lot of newcomers here, obviously, and one of them is Ceres. Now, Ceres offers three crossovers in their lineup, and it starts off with the 5. Now, this particular 5 is a series hybrid, so it's got a range extender. And, okay, just to simplify it, think of it sort of like a Nissan Kicks e-power system. So, this one on the other end, it's still a 5 model, but this is a plug-in hybrid. Now moving over there, you have the internal combustion engine models, the regular Ceres 5 and the larger Ceres 7. So the Ceres 5 competes in the compact market while the 7 competes in the larger mid-size segment. You're probably wondering by this time, how many more new brands do we have to cover? Well, we have this other one, Hikan. 
Now, Hiken locally will offer three models in the country, the A06 Plus midsize sedan, the Z03 Compact, and the V09 Luxury Van. Now, you seem to notice that the Chinese market love their luxury vans, and there's no shortage of them in Mias at all. If anything, almost every Chinese automaker booth we visited had some sort of variation of a luxury people mover. Interesting. Now, some of you may have heard of Omoda and Jayco already, but it took sort of a while before it actually landed in the Philippines. But now, they're here making their first public appearance at Mias 2024. And they're bringing in both brands, and their both brands are under Cherry. So, Omoda is sort of a youth-oriented brand, while Jayco focuses more on a slightly more rugged, rugged market with their boxier SUVs and whatnot. So that's Jayco and Omoda, two brands here in one booth. And that wraps up our coverage of the 2024 Manila International Auto Show. It's been a long day, of lots of new brands, lots of new cars, and a whole host of activities. So we hope you enjoyed this episode of Top Gear Philippines, and we hope to see you next here at the Motor Show.